The president made an announcement earlier this week dealing with international activities with closer neighbors in Indonesia, though, with Canada and with Mexico. This is an issue that's been discussed for quite a while. The president brought up in his campaign and immediately went to work on trying to be able to reshape the NAFTA agreement. Now, what's interesting is different states had different opinions about NAFTA, but in Oklahoma, our number one and number two largest export locations are Canada and Mexico. Our manufactured products, our agricultural products are moving north and south often to our close neighbors. And NAFTA has been a win for us as far as building our own economy and reaching out to our export products on that. So I was very attentive on this. When the president said he wanted to revisit NAFTA, our team quickly engaged with the president and with his team to be able to talk about what can we do to be able to help. It was one of the issues that I brought up with Robert Lighthizer before he was even, uh, even appointed to the position he's in as United States Trade Representative. We talked about NAFTA. We talked about the importance of trade agreements to make sure it was well. I met with, uh, with uh, Greg Dowd, the uh, chief agricultural negotiator, multiple times uh, through the process on this. I met with the White House uh, to be able to talk numerous times. Met with the president himself, met with the vice president. Met with different individuals with their team to be able to talk about how important trade is and how essential it is that we get to a good deal. Initially, the focus was on we're going to just resolve it with Mexico and leave Canada out. My conversations with the White House are, I understand, pressure on Canada, but Oklahoma's number one trading partner is Canada. So I'd encourage you to be able to finish this out as well because it's also exceptionally important to us. There is this perception that only the people that border with Canada care about trade with Canada. That's not so. So we continue to be able to interact with them in letters, in meetings, in phone calls, and was pleased to be able to see a trade agreement that actually came forward this week. Now, there's a lot to still be resolved, and we're still going through the details on it. But the important thing to be able to come through it is locking in some of the things that we already had with trade agreements. Because when I speak to the people in my state about trade, they will often say, we want to resolve the trade issues with our friends, but the main focus we want to have is reach out to make new friends internationally. Let's resolve the markets that we already have and make sure that's stable, but let's try to find new places to be able to sell our products and establish new trade agreements. It makes sense for our economy. It makes sense, quite frankly, worldwide for us. So I was pleased to be able to see the administration step forward in saying we're resolving the issues with Canada and Mexico and resolving some of the unanswered issues. If you go back to the 1990s, we weren't talking a lot about e-commerce in the 1990s when the NAFTA deal was first done. It was time for an update on that. It was time, quite frankly, uh, for a state like ours that deals with a lot of wheat that Canada finally acknowledges the wheat that we grow is quality wheat. Canada had a bad habit of every time we sent quality wheat to them, they would downgrade it as soon as it came across the border so that American wheat was never the same quality as Canadian wheat. Well, sorry to say, our wheat is that quality, and so that's finally being resolved uh, back and forth with Canada and the United States. Simple things like what is de minimis uh, products to be able to carry across the border between Canada and Mexico might not seem like a big deal, but allowing an individual to be able to travel across the border from the United States to Canada or back and forth with a small amount of goods that they purchased is significant to someone that's just going to be a normal consumer crossing back and forth across the border. To finally get that resolved, that's been a problem for a long time. And the dairy issues famously have been a, have been a problem to be able to resolve with Canada. To be able to open up their market a little bit more to dairy products is very significant for us. This preserves and expands access for U.S. poultry and egg producers. It makes updates to the areas where we need modern updates. So I'm pleased to be able to see that we're finally moving in an area to be able to resolve this. Now, there are some areas that I think still are unresolved. This issue about an expiration date, I've spoken with the administration multiple times about. I think trade agreements can be revisited at any moment. We don't have to set an expiration date on it. Clearly, they can be revisited because we're revisiting NAFTA right now to be able to renegotiate the deal. I don't think we need to set some future date in the future and say this whole thing goes away. I think that sets an arbitrary deadline on a trade deal that if it's working, we can renegotiate the areas that need to be tweaked, but leave it in place. It creates greater stability. So I look forward to having the debate about some of those issues and to try to resolve some of those things. But in the meantime, I do want to thank the Trump administration for doing the work that was required taking on the trade issue that needed to be taken on for quite a while in trying to actually get this resolved. 
now that NAFTA is wrapping up, and we look forward to again seeing the details in the days ahead and it coming before Congress for a vote as we see all the details and all the American people are able to be able to see this final negotiation. I look forward to seeing the next tier. The next tier are the new markets. We have trade issues, for instance, with Japan and United States beef. The whole world wants to have our beef, and they know the quality of the beef that we put out. But Japan has arbitrary tariffs that well exceed the norms against American beef coming into Japan that other countries don't face. That needs to be resolved with Japan. We need to continue to expand our exports into multiple other countries. The Trans-Pacific Partnership that was discussed in the previous administration, this administration set aside and said we're going to do bilateral negotiations rather than doing multilateral negotiations. I understand that, but it's time to take on those bilateral negotiations. It's time to actually deal with those trade agreements and try to expand into new markets and into new places. As the American economy is thriving right now, we're continuing to create greater efficiencies, greater products. The world continues to be able to want our products, and the more we can negotiate those deals and find places to send them and people that want to buy them, let's do it. And I would add one more thing in this. We have a unique relationship with England. As the UK breaks away in their Brexit vote from the EU and from that trading bloc, they're working on negotiating a deal with Europe. We should be aggressively negotiating a deal with the UK to form a trading relationship. There's no reason the United States and the UK shouldn't be the first major trade negotiation that they take on and that we solve. We have a lot of products back and forth, aerospace being one of those prime areas where the UK and the United States should be able to cooperate extensively in aerospace. Let's get that trade agreement going. Let's make sure that we can get that locked in because in the days ahead, we'll want to continue to have our close ally with the UK, including a close free trade agreement between us to make sure that we can knock down tariffs. This is a moment when the UK can walk away from Europe's high tariffs and high barriers to trade and to actually say, let's establish a closer relationship with our close ally with the UK. There's a lot to be done in trade. There's a lot of new places to go. And there are some areas that I would tweak and do different even in this new deal on NAFTA with the United States, Mexico, and Canada agreement. But I'm proud of the administration that they've actually taken this on to be able to solve it. As I've jokingly said, they've had the ability to be able to break things. Now it was time to be able to prove they can fix some things. This is one they're fixing. And it will be good for the American economy in the days ahead to be able to see if it's done. With that, I yield the floor.